good morning to all the ministers, including those who are joining us online and those who are here physically. We are very, very proud that today we are giving you guys a chance to do some business and know about business. It's always best to put your hands in the plow and join the business first, especially now that we're going to have the workshops. So uh, my name is Malus Ntweni. I'm going to be uh, your MC. Our program for today is going to be very short and it's going to be very informative. We're going to have at least about five from there. We're going to be doing presentations. After doing the presentations, we will take questions and uh, it's a Q&A session. From there, we're going to be doing the networking session. Okay, uh, the next person I'm going to call on stage uh, is going to be Minister Numa Gugu Mbelasi to do an opening prayer. From there, we'll do a word of offering. Good morning, Kingdom Builders. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, let us all close our eyes as we open in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we exalt you, Almighty God. We thank you, Mighty God, for allowing us, Mighty God, to trade, Mighty God, at such a season, Mighty God, that Mighty God is ripe, Mighty God. Father, we are just so grateful that, Mighty God, as entrepreneurs, you have given us the tenacity and the spirit to forge forward, Mighty God, even, Mighty God, in spite of the difficult times, Mighty God, that are amongst us, oh God. Father, we thank you that your Holy Spirit leads us even in these business transactions, even, Lord, as we represent the kingdom in the business sector, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you have gone before us, mighty God. Your presence is waiting for us in the marketplace. Like Moses, we say, if your presence doesn't go with us, we are not going there. But if your presence is there, we are there, mighty God, to conquer, to subdue, and to take over, mighty God, all that you have for us as an inheritance. Father, today we lay the program before you, each and every speaker that is going to present, oh God. Father, we pray that, Lord, you you will give us such good information that we are going to use it out there in the world, Almighty God, as we represent your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we are so grateful, Mighty God, for the opportunity. Mighty God, you said an amazing door of opportunities have been opened, even though there are many adversaries, Mighty God. We choose to focus on you, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When people say it's hard, but Lord, we choose to listen to your word of faith that says with, all, with God, all things are possible. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to be amongst us. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Minister. You can take your seat. Um, that's a beautiful prayer. Uh, I've, I have to say I've never heard of a prayer that uh, can be said not to be beautiful. Uh, in business, they say be like a postage stamp. Stick to a thing until you get there. And they're actually referring to the consistency of what you are applying. So with that uh, being said, I'd like to welcome again those who are joining us on screen and who are here. Um, first things first, I would like to, I would like to just take note of the speakers that are gonna be here. I'm gonna call their names just by one, one by one, and then we can we can know what they're going to be doing. I'm going to start with uh, Minister Patudi Malepe. He's going to be our speaker, who is going to be telling us about the purpose of the day. Mr. Isaac Masilela is also here. He's going to be doing the construction and property. Mr. Tabo Shanze is also here from One Real Expertise Properties. Uh, I know him to be coming from Middleburg. I hope I'm still correct, Mr. Tabo. Yes, and then we've got a very creative leader as well, uh, Ms. Amanda Noholoza, Information, Communication, and Technology. We also have Engineering and Quantity Surveying. If you are not here, if you are not concentrating, believe me, you might miss a whole lot of information. This is quite good information that is going to be shared today. So with that in mind, let me ask all of you guys to welcome on stage our minister, Minister Miss Amanda Noholoza, who's going to be doing the word of offering uh, for us. Please, with hands, please welcome Miss Noholoza. Thank you. 
Amen. Greetings, saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, my parents, Apostle Eddie and Prophet Stella, for giving me this opportunity to come and, uh, and give the word of offering today, as well as I'm grateful to the business desk also for this opportunity. I would like us to um, go to the book of John, chapter 6, from verse 1. Um, the word of God says this. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. Then Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him. Note that. For he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small balilos and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same um, with the fish. So here there were about 5,000 men that were present, that we are told about. And Jesus is asking Philip, and he's testing him. He's asking him, what are we going to do with this great multitude? And this test is coming after Jesus was harassed by the Jewish leaders due to their unbelief in him. Despite all the miracles that he had performed, they were still questioning him about healing a lame man on the on the, on the Sabbath. So this passage says that it is not because Jesus didn't know when he was asking Pete, uh, Philip this question. He knew what he was planning to do. So all Jesus wanted to see was whether Philip believed that he can feed the multitudes despite the fact that they had nothing in hand at that moment. The word of God in 2 Chronicles uh, 20, 20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established, and believe in his prophets, so you shall prosper. So we are therefore reminded in this scripture that it is Jesus who performs the miracle. It is not us. Us, we have a responsibility to participate by releasing that which is a substance of what we hope for, and that is our faith. So Philip and Andrew were being invited to participate in this great miracle that Jesus was, was planning to do. So thank God Andrew spoke up. Otherwise, they wouldn't have taken part, and they would have missed out. For Jesus would have performed the miracle without them taking part in it. So we're being asked today this question, how are we going to build the kingdom of God as we, are co as we know that we are kingdom builders? So it's not because God doesn't know what to do. We are just being invited to participate in what God is doing in this season. So you might think that how am I a, a, a kingdom builder? A kingdom, the kingdom is so enormous. You know, the church is so big, you know. The, how, how is my small business going to do? What, what is this money that I have going to do um, in, in building uh, the kingdom? But we are all here because Jesus just wants to perform a miracle through us. So let us not be limited 
in what we see, like Philip. Because God is able to do immeasurably, exceedingly and abundantly all that we may think or imagine through the power that works within us. And it is not just to do immeasurably and exceedingly, but there is the power and a force that needs to work within us, which will cause us to act. For the kingdom of God suffers much, much violence, and the violent take it by force. So it is that force that causes us to go forward and give, despite what we see at the moment. So let us release what we have and believe that he, God exists and he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word, mighty God. As we release the seed today, mighty God, we put it forth, O oh Father, that it may go before us, that, O oh Father God, you may bless us, mighty God, as we plant the seed, O oh Father. For you say that, mighty God, give and it shall be given unto us in good measure, shaken together, pressed down and, uh, pressed down and shaken together, running over, it shall be given unto our bosom. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much, Minister. Short word of offering. All right. Uh, we are continuing. While we are continuing, I would like us to be flexible. Please, as we are doing a word of offering, please do the basket that's going to be running around. Accept it. Drop something inside it and let it move. Once that is done, then life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. As a leader, you are always expected to be creative. And those are the words that encourages me every now and then when I'm trying to do business. And I've learned that during the training here at church. I'm moving forward. The next speaker for today, I'm going to invite onto the podium Umuntu Ozo Kulumanzi Amazu Amaba Ambalo Amazu A Kunileo, Uminister Upatudi Malebe. He's going to be doing a purpose for the day, and then we will know exactly what is needed of us. Thank you, Minister. Uh, greetings, church, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Ngati, you are not here. Are you here? Are we sure we are here, all of us? So I'm basically just going to speak about what we are doing here today. Uh, we welcome those who are viewing online we would have wished for you to be here so that there can be, you know, real interaction. Uh, but we hope that the next session you will be here with us. Uh, we will interact, all of us, uh, ask questions. But I encourage you also to write your questions on the comments line. Um, the purpose of this session is basically a workshop uh, where we're going to be talking about business. One of the things that we have realized is that uh, there is a, it's, it's, it's something that is well known. There is a high rate of unemployment in our country. And the unemployment that is there affects mainly the youth. Um, so we want to impart skills to people that it is not all about employment. There, there are other alternatives. There are opportunities out there that are available for us to can partake actively in the economy of this nation and that the economy needs us. If you're sitting and thinking that there is nothing for you to offer, believe you me, the economy needs you. And that is why we are here today, to speak to you, to direct you, to give you um, ammunition to go out there and work and put your hands on the plow so that you can be, you know, you, you can be able to, 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 to feed your family, able to grow, 
able to do things that you, you have always wanted to do. Okay, so that's basically what we're gonna be doing here today. Um, feel free, we're going to have a question and answer session after all the presentations. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, no matter how difficult they are, if we can't find answers for you here today, we will make sure that we get answers somewhere else and then bring them to you. Amen. But I want you to feel welcome. I want you to participate. I want you to really be part of this session today. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Mal Malusi. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Patudi. I knew that you're gonna you're gonna be very very short as well. Well, in business, we always want our relationship to be like Tom and Jerry. Do you guys know Tom and Jerry? Yeah. You do. Well, when I was young, I said to my my, my mom, uh, one day when I grow up, I want to be like Tom and Jerry. And then she gave me a funny look. So what I liked about it is that no matter how much you fight, you don't go apart. You don't give up the business of the day. Tom and Jerry's job was to make sure that we are entertained. So with that in mind, I would like to welcome the SSI into the building. Yeah. Very vibrant. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Stella, for letting them come here to enjoy the fruits of the business of today. I know with he, these young ones, you would take this and run with that. And when they do, we're going to have a lot of business people in this church. And very soon, it's gonna be say, we're going to be saying in South Africa. And they will all be coming from SSI. Amen? Amen. SSI. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Minister Patu, thank you very much for, for being short. Actually, I had, I had wanted you to come back so that we, we, you can be the one that does the speech, you know? Be the one that actually starts the whole thing. From there, we go to a video of Minister Isaac Masilela. Please uh, come back again. Uh, and now I'm pushing you around, but I trust that you'll receive that with a good heart. Thank you very much, Minister. Take oh, over. Well, thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to be talking about two things, basically. Uh, my first presentation is called The Business of Business. There is something in business that uh, every person needs to do to make sure that their business run effectively. Uh, business doesn't run automatically. When you register with um, the registra registration authority, it doesn't mean that everything will start working, but there are things that you need to put in process for you to start working. So I call that the business of uh, business. So um, the first thing that you need, or, or the things that we're going to talk about, uh, it's basically uh, five things, but I'm gonna concentrate more on, 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 on two, I have, I have grouped them. Um, the first thing that we're gonna look at is what I call productivity. Uh, normally we say that is time management, but it is called productivity. And then the second thing will be the team. How do you put together a team? And then followed by sales and marketing, administration and finance. But I, I will be focusing more on productivity and team. So productivity starts with a vision. If you don't have a vision, there is nothing that you're going to produce. Because it's like you're starting a business, but you don't know what you're going to do in that business. That's where productivity starts. The first thing that you need to do in, 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 in your business is to know what is it that I actually want to achieve in this uh, particular business that I want to run. Then you are able to allocate time for everything that you need to do. There is a quote that I like. Uh, it was said by one guy called Michael E. Geber. He said, the reason small business doesn't work is that their founders do the work themselves. The reason why small business doesn't work is that 
the founders do the work themselves. Most of the time, we become artisans in our own businesses. We become, you know, we have been, we have been taught, uh, socialized to become workers to an extent that you want to do everything on your own. If you know that you are not good in accounting, why do you want to run the, account, the accounts of the business? The fact that you are the visionary of the business doesn't mean you know everything. There is someone out there who is able to do what you can do. And I always give this example that, you know, when, when Moses said to God that he cannot speak, God said, I have already taken care of that part of speaking. And that part of speaking, I have given it to Aaron, your brother. You see, so God knows our limitations. So even in business, God knows that you don't know accounting. God knows that you are not good in marketing. There's nothing wrong with you getting someone to do that, okay? So to work on your business means that there are things that you need to do. Remember in the, when, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, there is something that Moses was doing continuously that dragged them back. And Jethro came and advised him that you need to put in a leadership, you need to put in a team together because there are things that you cannot do. So you need a team of people who are going to do some stuff, stuff that you cannot do. Okay, uh, you need to know your strengths. What is it that I can do? I, I want to repeat that. Know what is it that you can do and what is it that you cannot do. I gave an example about uh, fi financial management. If you can't manage finances, get someone to do it. You can continue learning the basics or learn um, the, 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 the other side of it, but get someone else to do it. Your job, basically, for me, I, I, I think your job as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur when it comes to financial management is to understand financial statements so that you can read and understand where the money went to after they've been compiled. Okay, do your daily plans. Most of us live in our inboxes instead of living in our diaries. What do I mean by living in an inbox? We don't plan. We wait for something to come. We check our social media uh, inboxes. We check our social media feed. We check our emails. We check everything for the day. We never plan what is it that I want to achieve on this specific day. We never plan what is it that I want to do in this whole year. We just say, nah, I will see it as, as it goes. You know, they said business is tough, so I don't want to, you know, uh, if I plan and the plan doesn't come together, I will get hurt. That's the mentality that we have, most of us, that I would rather not plan, just go with life as it goes, go with the flow. But going with the flow, the flow might be going in a different direction and the direction that you, are, you, you were not supposed to go. Are we still together? Then know your USP. That's that is the unique selling proposition. I'm going to talk about unique selling proposition when we come to uh, sales and marketing. But you need to know your unique selling proposition. What is it that you are selling? What exactly are you selling? Um, someone who sells, let's say, for instance, Oh, I will give an example that I normally give. That, for instance, when you go to Woolies to buy groceries, someone says, hey, Woolies is expensive, but Woolies doesn't sell food. They sell convenience. They're looking for someone who's saying that, I don't want to spend uh, 30 minutes in a grocery store because I'm, I, I'm busy somewhere. And they say, Woolies says, we are here for you. That's what they are selling, convenience. So know what you are selling, that you will be able to compete in the market. And one of the biggest, biggest challenges that we face as businesses is our ability to sell, sales and marketing. 
And marketing, basically marketing is a communication tool to build relationships. Forget about all the other things that you have learned about marketing that they have taught you. It's just a communication tool to build relationships. Okay. And what does that tool do? How does it build relationships? It builds relationships in dealing with a kind of a sickness that uh, is called um, cognitive dissonance. Now, what is cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance is very simple. It means that you are so rooted in believing something that even when new information comes, you are not ready to accept it, even with all evidence that is there. For instance, if I'm so used to eating brown bread and someone says, but there is another type of bread, which is white bread, even with all evidence, and I'm not saying white bread is healthy, I'm just giving an example. Even with all evidence that they might present to say white bread is healthy, I would say I eat what I have been eating. This is what my grandmother taught me to eat. That is cognitive dissonance. It just means that you, you, are, not accept, uh, uh, you are not a person who accepts uh, uh, change. So marketing helps with that. You are there to change people's perspectives. And marketing... It's biblical. We need to understand that because even Jesus did marketing. Most of the time we're thinking, uh, marketing, yo. We're thinking about the budget of marketing, but these days there is new ways of doing marketing. Uh, one of them is social media. Social media has given us an opportunity to be on the same level with big companies, with big budgets that we would not have had before. We can put our products out there and reach the same market that a very huge company would reach with their own big budget. Okay, so you just have to know how do you utilize social media for all uh, your marketing needs. I always uh, ask, ask this question when a person says that, I can't market my business. I don't know how to market my product. Is that why do you create such a good product that solves people's problems and then you hide it? Why? Why would it be that you create a solution to challenges that people are facing and then you decide to hide the solution? You don't give uh, that solution out to the people. And then just four things that I need to look at on marketing, and then we, we're done with this presentation, is that marketing creates awareness. Marketing creates awareness. Jesus said, go ye therefore. And he didn't just say go and sit. He gave us a mandate to go and teach them. Meaning that you need to convince them. You need to make them understand about the product that you are selling. Whatever you are selling, make them aware, number one. Make them to understand the value that the product uh, brings. And then convict them. Make them to, 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 to have no other alternative, to have no other choice but to take your product. And then lastly, let them take action. When we do social media activations, we normally say we're looking for the leads. Where do you lead the people to when you put your social media activation? Do you want to convert them into sales? Do you just want to convert them into people who admire your product? And then it ends there. There has to be a call to action. You want them to email you. You want them to WhatsApp you. You want them to purchase what is the action that you want people to take as, they, as, 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 as you are marketing your product? So basically, those are the few things that I wanted to share with you this morning. Uh, team and productivity and then sales and marketing. Okay, so I hope that we take this and run with it, especially the marketing part, because I know that one of the things that we don't like doing 
uh, in most cases, is marketing our businesses. There is one famous person who once said, you know, I always had this uh, advert in the morning uh, when I'm when, 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 when driving. Uh, it was most of the time on uh, SAFM. They said, if you don't, if you cut your marketing budget because you're thinking it's expensive, you are like a person who stops a watch to stop time. If you stop marketing because it's expensive, you are like a person who stops watch to save time. It means that that action is actually impossible. You're not going to get any results. Okay. So that was my first presentation. And the last presentation, the second presentation is on what I call capacity building. It's um, basically as we give the, 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 the media team to, to project it, it's basically on, 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 on the opportunities that are available in training and development in the market. Um, so I'm going to look at just a brief overview of the training sector, um, the opportunities that are available, the challenges, and then we do the summary quickly. So this one is going to be very, very short. Brief overview. In South Africa, we have got about 21 sector education and training authorities. Those are the CITAS. Now, why do we have these CITAS? A few years ago, uh, some people sat together with government and looked at our um, national skills capacity. And they realized that we, we're running short of people who are skilled in our nation. And they came up with ideas on how to fast track the skills development in the nation. And they decided that in order to fast track skills development, rather than uh, the traditional way of education, which is going to university or college or any other educational institution, we need to have short courses that will be supplied through the CITAS. So the CITA stand for uh, Sector Education and Training Authority. So we've got 21 of them covering all the, se uh, the sectors in our country. So we have got a National Human Resource Capacity Strategy, which informs what the CITAs are all about. They did a skills audit and identified a lot of skills gaps. So those of you who uh, follow what government is doing, you would know that on the 2nd of February, the Minister of um, Home Affairs published what we call a critical skills list in the country. What are the skills that are in shortage in the country? It's over 120 skills that he has mentioned in that particular list that if we can't find someone from our nation, companies are allowed to go outside the borders of South Africa to find someone. But why would companies go outside the confines of our borders to find someone if we can train people? And then there is what government calls infrastructure developments, and there is skills shortage in that area. One of the skills that are in big shortage in South Africa, I know, regarding infrastructure development, uh, maybe Mr. Masilela will, will attest to this as he is in that uh, particular sector. In South Africa, we're running short of plumbers currently. We're running short of plumbers. We're not training enough plumbers um, to, to do the work that is required to, for us to build that infrastructure of plumbing. So what are the highlights? As I've just mentioned, one of the highlights is that we're running short of plumbers, so if you want to train plumbers, that's a good opportunity. The highlight is that we have got a skills deficit in our country. There's, there's a lot of skills shortages in, in, in this nation. So there is an opportunity in the capacity development. It is a growing sector with its own challenges. I will mention just a few of those challenges. There is an opportunity for partnerships opportunities for collaboration. 
that you can have with other people. You know, one of the things that I always, I always look into the Bible when I'm when, when, uh, for for answers. And when 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 Jesus said to Peter, when Peter has toiled the whole night uh, looking for fish that he could not find, you know, with his team, but when Jesus said to them, um, lower down your nets, the Bible says they caught. Uh, so much fish that their nets were breaking and their boat was sinking. But what did Peter do? He signaled other people who were close to him, the, who were on, on, on that particular area fishing as well, for them to come and help load onto their boats, meaning collaboration and partnership. So collaboration and partnership comes very far. It's not something new. Even though it seems like we we we're now talking about it, it's something new, but it comes very far. The challenges of, of, of this sector is availability of qualified resource. We are in shortage of qualified facilitators, qualified assessors, and qualified moderators. That's one of the challenges that the sitters are facing at the moment. There is just not enough. The second one is the accreditation process. It's a bit cumbersome. Um, in most cases, it is very difficult to do it on your own without the assistance of an external consultant. And that means you will need to part with some money to develop your quality assurance material, to develop your training uh, material that is aligned to the requirements of the services CETA. It's not impossible. I have done it on my own, so it's something that can be done. But it's just a lot of work that you need to put time on it. So in conclusion, there is a need for human resource development in our nation. There is a need for human capacity development in a lot of things um, that you can think of. You can think of, as, as when, when I started, I said there is a, 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 a high level of unemployment and as um, a business desk, our, one of our focuses is to develop entrepreneurs. So there is a shortage of entrepreneurs even in, in our country. Believe you me, there is a shortage of entrepreneurs and to an extent that we, we, are, we are now borrowing entrepreneurs from Kenya, especially in the ICT space. Uh, I think Minister Nomwongo will know about it. We, we, we are recruiting a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or a lot of skills from Kenya at the moment. And I think from what I know, Rwanda is going to be the next destination where we will be recruiting because there is just a big shortage in those spaces. So with that uh, being said, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for giving me audience, for listening to what I was here to say. Uh, we're gonna have question and answers. Note down your questions. Um, Minister Melusi will, will announce and advise us at the relevant time when we need to ask those questions. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Um, I'd like to welcome our pastor, Apostle Eddie Tepler. He's also here with us. A round of applause. <laughs> Let me also welcome those who, are, who have joined us online. Minister Manzambata, uh, Minister Jojo Moile, Minister Tine uh, Chimusoro Danje, uh, Minister Nelsiwe Anderson. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, we are now preparing ourselves for a beautiful video that has been prepared by Mi Minister Isaac Masilela. After that video, we're going to ask uh, Mr. Chavo Shanze from One Real Expertise to also grace us with, uh, with his presentation after the video. Thank you very much. Over to the guys with the videos. Use your papers, use your pen, prepare your questions, I'll come up with the answers. If I don't have the answers, 
I'll ask the speakers to assist me with the answers. Uh, we are not short of answers in the country. We are only short of the number of items that Mr. Fatidia has mentioned. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that the video is now ready. All right. Uh, let me ask Mr. Chabo Shanze to come and share his presentation with us. Mr. Shanze is prepared. Please come and join us. And then once Mr. Shanze is done, we will go back and do the video. I don't want you to miss the video. Okay, we're seeing that the video is ready. Uh, let's play the video right now. I don't want to disapp disappoint anybody. Let's play the video and then I can sit down. Thank you very much. Like in many provinces, Mpumalanga is one of the provinces with housing backlogs due to growing demand and limited resources. The Secunda Housing Project is an initiative by Sasol Mining in partnership with government and the private banks to provide affordable housing for its employees. To date, Sasol Mining has handed over more than 200 housing opportunities to its employees as part of the social and labor plan. The first time homeowners are more proud than owning a home. There are many challenges, especially in the whole In the whole world, in the private sector, in this case, it's Sassol Mining, to make sure that the people who are in the decent, affordable housing. This is breaking new ground. Malam Noctula or Masang Sabenzala Usasol, a Figilana MZ way to more twenty eighteen Akast. This is Noctula Sabon. I go to some Gale Wako. Thank you so much. Yabonga Nam Sabona like I go to Gambella, the Lustella and Wooting in the Bugayako Buyago. Zala Etelmas. Okay, a gunning gag. Kasi for Baba was shown Axel Mam. Okay, sorry to hear that. When how was growing up in your family? Tina's Kulisi for so we forum. So in Jungle Bessie for obvious Sosera, a camerily one. So Funanjom Sevenzi, my tennis and his tolang shala, a lace ling shala no swam, my toller um sevenzi gas a soul mining as a maintenance operator. Then I seven again as a soul until I'm change. Mount Ashwa, how was the feeling? Yo, Bukum Nandi, yo, Kakur. So Nimalia, co outside depending on Bazalin. So Konuz and Zelis into Zakon and Manga in Ufunai, we are Konuz Tangela in Tole. Sisters Figella, Ubeno Muzuako. How did it help you when he in the Bayes subsidy, Nen Sasol? Ushanga no guti ube no wakumuzi njenge minye nje mize kona la. Usa solu ubone uguti aba seven zibaka aba nyingi bakashile, aba nyabashale mafletini, aba nyabashale makaya. So wabono uguti no nguno a azame, uguti a a a a a a a a funile izi nju. And then gula abakala basichela kono uguti usa solu uzo funila aba seven zibabo izi nju. And then since nga ma operator skola ganyanyi. Bazoza Muguti, Ama Operator, at least I was up to Lizing. Then Gula Ye, Sakalakona, I apply. A Camonenti, Camete, the Seven Sassol Mining, the Housing Department, as a Housing Administrator. Can you give us a brief background with Nom Seven Zwakoyen and what inspired you to be where you are today? It's a sort of E. Decide the Uwakela, our Seven Zibayo, is in. Kunaba sevenzi as babies wuti aba qualify upten is inclu, especially is in close it to rai. So manje a sisiza aba sevenzi bay to wuti babi na makaya because bane mindin. 
and then again, me nanga ba ilum seven zero zero ba nintla nintla wat maga apply and then usa solo am approve ge nanga pakuno government subsidy ni kesho esizile ga kulo so esizile ga kulo shem ngaba kubebe ngasi ilogo na me angbono kuti bengzo itola inzo kule kolo lele esiltola yeah maisha builda ni rubusha lago. Bengkala kasi swa mile silingo ni zangu zangu zoche kuku tisi seba haufa ba ya kita itana yibo na ngoba bengkala usiswa mo unomdenua ke ngapana mnyumtua na inshara ikamero mnyumtua na mfanu ya kula saga na bote tini ya zoe bono kuku tini zoe ai aku correct yibo na so wangu chabli saga kulu nje masi saba ni chelo kuti ena inji ya kuno tula se pelile guga kula na so nje kumna ndinge. Ukona, yazi ni juu shaizi kiasi kwa uti kuga milana wiyabona una diga kul. Sasol Housing Project is a continuous process and an initiative by Sasol Mining to housing its employees. The number of houses Sasol Mining has handed over to its employees still continues to grow, with another housing project in the horizon. Here you come with such a brilliant, brilliant idea. Wagonze njano wazengare lukel. Any antisasoli it believe la M D Nini, cause abantu basuga queen down queen down baso seven the saso, so si bona ngati agu korai tu kuti abantu basa lin kumponi ba num den basi min den makai, so kungo numa nga bebeza la na basa le bakhe imizi la balandi min deni abantu na bakule lim deni ne right, ba ba no ma meka ya bonge we abon. And then maguza go flis. How has that been a, a, a step in the right direction in terms of first-time homeowners, especially Laba Aba Ena, Imalinga Tite Bangan? Yes, if this business is a cool, Naba Seven Zibetu, especially Ama operators' way to Nama general workers' way to our afford to obtain his income, Mugwabo. God, okay, is a solid in a subsidy by Payona, plus if this be. So when the money was cool, that's why Abanta Baning, Abang Azang, but Abang got Bang Abanizing, Banizing to Namurkamova, if Lisp Yelisa, a Malinea Boyzing. What sort of conditions do you put in place to make sure good lesson to lesson are just not um, a thing Umuntanga Hambis and you are creating legacies for those families? Kuna ma agreement about our sign now. Tina Ezima in Faneva Seven Zele E campaign for five years, Nala is in Lin Batali for five years. Now that's a fair ask. No Gwemaranjan in the Bay a delinquent worker, a city mina, Ning Kuzil and Nankuza, Nana Kuzega, Sekfiga La Manji, we must part ways. And yet I'm two years in Gulen Rule. As as Bako Shaban. As if I call she because is in Kulez access a sasol is abo bunny bunny agreement in a bank. So, umang abe umuntu, let's say we are caution seven zinuna two years a lilla. So, u arrange a ne bank, u go to uzo patalaganza ne bank. Yes, sasol mining be imnigas in my room class and jungum seven zua. Are you happy with this development? I am very much happy. Moba, sing bonega cool, cause if bonga bantu says by Kelly Zing, basas bonga na namul, basas bonga na namul individually and as a mind, as a whole. Futi sisa zokala ngale project, so ngatanda njogo ti bonga bantu ba pindenge ba apply ba ngasabi la ba zoltolu sizo. What a lovely lady, what a lovely home. Guess Jablis Bona Guti O Mama by Bambi, Epcalin by Banez in Luzab. I guess one of Muyum Sali for the season with Bona Bashil Ganja. Adinalang and Cotterani, a Chvanchang and Chicoana, a Bambumo. Nika, Madame Pichinango, see from Nelly Sprayed. Munin Calix Sevens, I saw Soli twenty seventeen, Muchun. Suspechuna, uh, to Batalan is a bong, a good in some gale kailing. I'm not a seven of his in his parish. Is a ganjan in the opportunity, good in his and benekai. The opportunity lena, my veil, the villain at Jessie who in a missile, like Halpilly gives you so too, because we're selling my letters, rain deal, and crushing a plate tea. 
Mabuga, le mal au patala irain, dan, ou tu patel intolet doctrine exine, gubeguiaco, ou snoma anything, linga in dega gim no bab. Et listen van a wait, Sam Shela, a kaya le gubu, ou tu a lami daily, nine ebam keeping access. A kaya a locona, mammy, we are corner with a goose varachella, nine mamake, we are corner with a goose as varachelling ala. Nums and wish of tin for when as nums and a kaya, especially for your son to have a place where they can call home and to see them there running around the neighborhood. Ngizwento ingijabu sa kakhulu ngoba vele ngisho masiphila sasazi udlula kulo mhlaba. Yeah. So uyazi ukuthi mase udlulile umntwana nala azofihla khona ikhanda lakhe. Eh abantu abaninga abazi no hlelo le flesp nina naze kanjani. Kubuta ke asita bathi indlela kubita ke lamaphambili. Absolutely. How is it for you in terms of inconvenience? You uh, be ama amenities around. I niakona in ugiya closer to the shops, to the places of entertainment for for your child as well. Gugu shega kulu lango ba ya bone se 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 town. Ugiya mse benzin vele i kuse tuze kuya townu uya shimo to ululenga nenya uhambe uyebo sinema zikhona khona khona la kuseke ukuthi vele uzomela ukuthi uhambe i long distance uye khona la yeah you took advantage okusebenzisana kwe private sector ne government most companies abanye you know abayenzi into efana nale ukuthi babheke ukuthi abasebenzi babo they got affordable housing what does it mean to you that that company did that to make sure that the government is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. Jenga manje vele mtu ngasho kuti uzizwa chabulile kuti unikaya lake, ushala kwa ke, ya. Development and construction of housing projects contribute significantly to stimulating our economy and growing SMMEs. Mziwe to Holdings is a developer of the Sasol housing project. I'm Isaac Masilela. A managing director and the founder of the company Collins Wedu Holdings that has been responsible to build these affordable houses around Secunda Extension 23, appointed by Sasol Mining. Now, looking at this housing development, is Sasol they were looking for a black developer, a developer that is coming from this area. Then I was appointed, uh, sort of became into partnership with Sasol from 2015, uh, building these affordable housing for their employees. What were the challenges, Mangal? The main challenge about any development is, is to convince people that the beautiful houses that they are seeing on documentation are going to be built in the desert that they are seeing at that particular point in time. But eventually, that desert was tend to be a nice kind of a development like this. Yeah. I guess in getting the manager in the building of the houses, what sort of values, uh, ethos, ethics dictate in terms of giving or handing over that is of pristine qualities. What is it that uh, you follow? What informs you? I passion is about quality houses because of my background. Mm -hmm. So I don't wish any whoever person to get a shoddy kind of a house. Mm -hmm. So the only way to make people look be happy about the product that they are receiving is to give them quality. Because we are registered with NHPRC, basically these houses are insured over a period of five years. So you cannot come and do a shoddy work because else if you do that, it's going to come back and hit you. Okay, and the type of bricks that you use, the type of material, are those uh, locally sourced? Uh, are those um, manufactured by any chance by uh, various small businesses? Uh, when we build the house, there are two types of bricks that we are using. The outside brick, which is a face brick, uh, is a well-developed kind of a brick manufacturers, which are local, but however are wide-owned. Ash bricks is a brick that we are using inside, which is locally manufactured with uh, upcoming Imaging manufacturers which are black. So, sipping the food, sipping the window, sometimes we have aluminium, then there are local manufacturers which are black companies that supply us with those. So, when it comes to um, empowerment, especially about to Abasha, no mama, William Bonnier, where the opportunities for such people? When we run a project of this size, 
more or less about 150 employment opportunities are created. Out of that, you'll find that 60% is youth, and out of that, you find that about 20% is women. Some youth and some other women came into the project with no skills or so whatsoever. Uh, then we had the on-site training, whereby we were being assisted by big companies. Uh, at the end of the training, then they were issued with the um, uh, certificates. So there are quite a number of individuals who came here with no skill whatsoever, but today they've got the skills plus qualification. Not only that they will be employed by this project only, but they can go anywhere and uh, issue out that certificate that they were being given and be able to be employed for that particular kind of a skill. It's not that often that a private company can care about Abasabin's Babu in such a manner. To, to be part of that partnership, in when I oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no, I think Isasol has made something that is very unique, where firstly, I mean, partnering with the emerging black developer uh, is not something that is being practiced by the companies. So we're very thankful of the opportunity that Sasol has given us. And at the same time, I mean, providing quality houses for their employees is, is, is not seen. I think that's something that needs to be commendable. especially first-time homeowners, low-income groups, good nabo, they can buy their dream homes. My name is Brendan Lindobushes Kosana. And I'm Jenna Lima Sego. And this is Secunda Extension 23. And we've been here since the 16th of July 2019. How does it feel that you are homeowners and you've got your family here? It's amazing. It's yeah. It's wonderful. You get to have your own home and create your own memories. So. Before then, where, where did you guys stay? In a complex. We were renting. Oh, okay. But Linda, when, uh, before you, you guys met, um, uh, your family, can you tell us how you grew up? When I was so young, so I was so mom, no baba. Till I was, I think, 12. Were there other siblings? I have two elder brothers. I'm the last born. So, I went to our university and I was the only one who was left, no mom. Jeez. Until Dom Tala graduated, he bought a house and then we moved to the house they were attending only. Let's talk about when you got the opportunity to, to have this house. How did that come about? I was working as a contract yes, that's all, mm -hmm. for eight months. December the 1st, 2018, I got my appointment letter to be a permanent employee. Wow. So when I took it, Immediately, I went to Sasol Housing, with no apply. So after that, she, she took my pay slips and everything. I think it was on Monday. On Thursday, I got an SMS that I did qualify. Wow. Yeah, it was quick. That must have been something for you. <laughs> I was thinking of the little one. Yeah. That's it. How did e e e e FLISP help you? As I'm a, I'm a plant operator, so we, we don't actually earn that much. Mm -hmm. So Flips was able to assist us to afford in a way. Yeah. Right. Generally, moms make a home. Mm -hmm. And when you came in, what was the first thing that went through your mind? In my head, because while they were building, we used to come around just to come see. Yeah. So I already knew, this is going to be like that, so yeah. There you are, homeowners, that generation of old people who go on yeah. 20, 40 years without even having a house. You have an opportunity to break that cycle. I do work with people that have been working for like almost 40 years, but the person still lives like, you know, mm. 18 or whatnot or whatever. So, I mean, I think it's a very, it was a good They do a good job in empowering like their workers especially. Mm. So I think they're doing an amazing job. And we are very proud that young people like yourselves, a young couple like yourselves, are a good example to others. Your life is a direct reflection of why you want hers to be better, right? Uh, we hope to come back years when you've grown up and see what you have done to this <laughs> house, right? <laughs> The Department of Human Settlements Program, Finance Linked Subsidy Program, or FLISP, was a critical instrument in delivering the Sasol Housing Project. FLISP 
is intended for the market segment whose income is not enough to qualify for a home loan, but too high to access government's free basic housing subsidy scheme. It applies to households with income between 3,500 and 22,000 rand per month who are buying a home for the first time seeking to acquire a home loan with a financial institution. I'm Patrick Ngoman, Sevendelai Department of Human Settlement as Assistant Director responsible for IFLISP. Oxekle shoko abantu aksiyo inde elula ngoba umopega njene sekunda. Ten years ago, I found in a manji. Abanya abantu bayeza kona because of job opportunities as well. As in the wikula nayo, there is so much development in Zagalai. Young people, abafunungen, abatoles in the first time owners, baba nenging, nebasi zaganja. Ngenga elulse lo lulusi yesi bugo guti labantu labala ba sebenda gola basha, most laba ma middle earners. Utola guti ba sebenda ba sebenda kona ma company na fana na busa sol, but ge la basha la kona basha la emi kukuin la banya basha la ge guma ge guma kamera ba kelo wana ba salba ola manga nene. So ba nalo mesu gutu ni ya sebenda mara ukoni ta kela injule right. So la poge la siga kona ge ge program ya department e bidwa nguti iflispo o ike market. Pesa mbesi si senza ama workshop na ma company si njalo njalo si ba chelo guti si ne program leso lele ketarisha abandu abama middle earners abandu laba hola kusuge lange tulu wa 3,501 to 22,000 so isa solge ya se isi rezera le program ya wele bayenda ago se si akaza na gubo kutoke sata wan laba so laba so and then gwendi wanja nige iprocesi ni ipi so ganja lo wase kubalu lage sa se stola ga ema beneficiaries bas assista o se si nensi na 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 ba ni laga seven sana laga seven sana na ugoti skone kutola le program Iran es kwa sisi ema forms batat but masu batata lapa agusho ugoti sisi ba qualify still is na lenye i i i i system le si seven sana kugiti office in le tu ga human settlement si bidan ugoti HSS njoo ba sisi manje le program le it's for first home owners for first home buyers i but na ba ketcharisha ama details alu mundo la park system Bese lama details haya veta, kutoke agasa a benefit eh ku program yeka vamenti ilijenga bo ili nigeta ilangu ma RTP injalo injalo. Kuti penda na kona kuti utola malini ngagwe salary yake kuto fola gipi is salary bracket. Mwende galomia tole hundred thousand, lomia tole thirty thousand, lomia tole fifty thousand. So isabena kanga ni geleman. Aye ti straight e pogetin le mundo kuto simplambe. So deposite la yona ku account yako. But isi deposita gum go 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 account ye loan yakho ukuthi kwathi ukuthi i reduce le loan le initial amount lo ibolekile iyehle ukuze nesikwene sakho sibe affordable bamngomane ningathi ngomanye ama private companies in terms of following the example enzwe usasol ne department of human settlements msibona ngakuthi kusite kakhulu ngoba imikhukhu iya iya iyancipha especially kubantu labasebentako lokufanele ukuthi babe nemakhaya bahlale kahle ukuthi asista kakhulu ikakhulu kathi kumithana ne concept ye 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 sustainable human settlements igoal le department lele sustainable human settlement uma uyibuka le ndzawo le yakhiwe i fully serviced inawo onke ema service so sikujabulela kakhulu ikakhulu kathi uma sibuka indlela isaso lesnet isengayo siyafisa ukuthi nalamanye ema company angakhona ukuthi joina isisiste basebenti bawo batholet indlela eti right bangakhona nokuthi basicheke futhi bangena na ku website ye flisp batole more information bangwa invite ama department e department yake human settlement ukuthi ite kuma hr abo na kubasebenti babo bende i presentation kuze beve abantu ukuthi bangancedza kakanjani namhlanje ukukhule sikufundile kule episode sifunde ukuthi the private sector no hulumeni bangahlangana and create a symbiotic relationship especially when it comes to the benefit of abasebenzi History informs us that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. They are living in the world. They are living in the world. They are living in the world. In the new dispensation, they are living in the world. 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 They are living in the private sector. They can join with government in settling human beings. They are living in the backlog. They are living in the world. It's a practical behaving project. I mean, 
Isaac Mislele. On the foreign speaker is Minister Tabutland. Uh, I just want to read something that I took from Mr. Tlanzi. Mr. Tabu Tlanzi is a director of uh, One Real Expertise Properties Agencies in Middleburg. If you want to get, get hold of him, you can contact him on 013-813-1405. Or you can email him on tabo at realexpertise.co.za. As soon as Mr. Tlanzi uh, has done his presentation, I will also share the details of Mr. Isaac Masilela so that you can also invite him to your provinces and ask him to head a department or a project as beautiful as the one that we saw. Thank you very much. Please give him a, a beautiful hand again, <laughs> Mr. Isaac Masilela. <laughs> Mr. Tanze, whenever you are ready, please come and join me so that I can go and have some tea. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Shanz. Uh, good morning. Is it good day? Good morning. I'm uh, Tabu as they said. I'm from Middleburg. Um, we're doing e real estate agents. So they've asked me, Uti, if I went there, in sort of advising about Uti, like pe people want to get into real estate, uh, taking through the process, Uti, what do you need to do in order to? to run agents. So, but they said the real estate, so I will cover only what I'm doing day to day. So there's files that I gave to, um, I think there's some left now, Paul, if you can give it to people, because we'll go through the file. Naga peli elekshuti is a peli sand. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Patrudi and the, uh, the team, the business leaders, to for the invitation. So I hope I, I will cover the assignment that I was given. So the first page there, um, uh, it's just a definition, yeah, yeah, real estate, because uh, getting into real estate, I think you need to understand good what is real estate. Yeah. So uh, it's as written there with the real estate I is a real property that consists of land and improvement which include building uh, fixtures, roads, structures, uh, utility systems, property rights gives a title of ownership to the land, improvement and nature resource such as minerals, plants, animals, water, etc. So I'm gonna cover um, only that consists of land and building because that's where I am. It's where I'm exposed to. So the second page is a type of real estate that we have. So there's land uh, of which Abu Mr. Masilela they deal with that mostly to develop it. Uptola uh, an empty land and develop it. So it involves AMA developers mostly. So there's um, a residential, uh, residential properties, mm, uh, like the Kai and Jilaushala corner, those are residentials. And then there's industrials where you get AMA firms, uh, where people are working and stuff. And then there's commercials, with which is, um, like office, office space, uh, yeah, those kind of uh, buildings. So that's, that's the four types we've covered. And then there's, uh, I covered few, ne? there's many businesses in real estate. So I covered developers, 
Um, so which real estate developers are the process that involves the purchase of raw land or rezoning, construction and renovati renovation of the building, uh, of the sale and lease of the finishing product uh, and end users. So I'm also getting into development. Uh, I think I have two, what, three projects that I'm busy with now. So same join in with us later. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you if you wanna do this, uh, you have to register with the NHPRC. Uh, you, you go there, you, there's a form you fill up and then I think they give you a month, it's 30 days and then you must come and write there's a module that they will give you. You have to read because you wanna write. It's an online test that you write there. And then once so now you, um, uh, Mina, what I do because I haven't done the the peak land and stuff. Uh, I'm 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 running agents at the same time. Ne? So what I do because they are clients that are not satisfied maybe with the houses that we'll show them. Ne? So uh, I, will, I will get a land, even if that land doesn't belong to me. Ne? I get a land, I get a, a draftman, also Konwenzela, this, this person a plan according to affordability act. Um, uh, you put a plan to that um, uh, draftman and then we apply, apply la, a building package, sort of. And then it's going to be a progress payment. So it means even if you don't have money, you can start, you know, as long as you follow the process, because it's gonna be a progress payment. So maybe other banks will say, uh, you can do the foundation first and then the inspector will come and check. And then after that, you can apply for, um, for a withdrawal, maybe that first withdrawal if you don't have money. And then you can start just like that. And then the brokerage and the, the brokerage and the real estate agency, I'm gonna focus on this one mostly because it's where I have experience on. Eh? And it's what we I'm I'm actually doing every day. So uh, that one is a firm that uh, employs a, a team of real estate uh, property practitioner who help facilitating and uh, transactions between the buyer and the sellers of the property. Their job is to present their part and help them achieve a purchase of sale with the best possible terms. So the others, you can go through and check them. Ne? So the, the property management is linked with the brokerage um, and the property sales, marketing as well. So I'm gonna do the three at once. Ne? Under the real estate agency. So if you turn on the page, there's a steps to become a real estate agency owner. So for me, uh, I will advise Guti, if you want to start this uh, kind of a business, uh, go and join one of the estate agency company. Become an intern, um, learn how this thing is, uh, and then follow the process of registering to EAB, have the portfolio of evidence. Um, at least if you have an experience of being an agent, I think you'll, you'll able to understand if your team comes with any kind of problems, you'll able to solve it. But if maybe you went in with only a capital because you had capital, you wanted to start this kind of business, uh, I don't think you'll able to run smooth because some of the things you won't even have to know them. You weren't able to help your team actually. They want to solve those problems that they are bringing. So, yeah, just work for that three years at least. Have an experience, Uguti. Uh, how is it to become a, an estate agent? And then after then, you can do all the courses that you're supposed to do and start. 
Because if if we if we tell her without that, it means we'll have to hire someone to become the the manager of office in for something that we don't even know. Right? So I will say rather go there and um obey agent, join one of the agencies and start like that. So the the steps are Okay, firstly here I said the real estate uh, industry is a challenging and rewarding field to be in. Running an estate agency business is hard work. It requires patient, dedication, and an understanding of the industry. Therefore, entrepreneurs who do not possess those qualities will find it hard to succeed in the real estate industry. You see? So this is true because at least if you have that little experience of being an agent and you understand this industry, the ins and outs, and then um, if you are dedicated enough, if you love this thing, because in real estate is all about the passion, you need to be um, so passionate about it. Right? And another thing, you, you, you can't start a business without um, but sort of ad identifying a problem that you need to solve in that uh, industry. Right? So if you have that, then it means it, it, it will be able to run. So entrepreneur need to have well-developed decisions-making skills to know that to invest uh, in and how to make advantage of the market when running a real estate business. So also you need to take advantage. You need to know, Uguti, because investment is not always, um, as they are saying, real estate is not always uh, a, it's not always an investment. It's about how you invest. If you're going to buy a, pri a property that is overpriced, it's not investment. If you're going to buy in an area where it doesn't develop, it's not an investment. Yeah, but there are areas um a middle back if i can tell you about it there's an area but it's a middle back south né? but the the south is divided now there's a site of south of mineral so in that side né, there's no development there's nothing that is happening so the 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 property growth there it's been stagnant for since i became an agent so those prices that we were using before you can still buy a property with the same price, you see? So if you, you buy in that particular area and say um, you are investing, obviously when you are investing, you want to, when you sell this property, it must give you a certain profit and all that. But in that area, it, it will seem like you are, no, like Henrina as well, it seems like a loss. Uh, you buy a property or you build a property that is very nice, but when you're supposed to sell, it seems like you'll be losing instead of making a profit. So it's not always an investment. So if you, you, you get into this business because you'll have people that are like clients that are coming to you wanting to invest in property, you must have that eye so that uh, next time when they come and want to buy more properties, uh, uh, you, like you have been advised them in a right way so that they can able to add on that property portfolio, they can able to add properties. But if you don't have that eye, it means it will be a hell of a problem for your side. You will be losing business because business is about referrals, right? So here, uh, I said you can start as an intern, and then there's a the you have to register with the the board, the EAP, and then you start your portfolio of evidence, which is a logbook. And then you need to register for for the NQF level four. You, and then you, you will write the exam, which is the PDE exam four, and then you become a full estate agent. So after being a full estate agent, uh, you can enroll for the NQF five, become competent on it, write the PDE five, then you are a, a property principal property practitioner. So it means you can able to start your own business then. So there are other things that you need to do after then. It means you must register a company. 
um, register a company, open that business account, have a vet, open a trust account. Then all those documents has to be submitted to uh, EAP, of which now it's known as a <coughs> um, property practitioner regulator, regulator authority. They've changed the name. Okay. So challenges that we that I've faced since I started, our company is turning four years this year. Ne? So we started 2018. So since we started, I think the first three months when we open, uh, you must remember this industry is um, uh, it's it's full of white people, if I may say that. So. We entering to that space, it was difficult because there is like a group of them wanted to close us down once when we were starting. So, bad mouthing, saying you are not complying, you don't have uh, the company is not registered. Some of those things we face. Some of those things when we were starting, put up in your boards if it's on show, you find them being destroyed. Uh, they will like pay black people to do that, you know? So you pay them, they come and destroy your boards and all those, those are the challenges that we, we faced when we were starting. And then another thing to establish your name, because they, they are big companies that are there. Ne? They've been selling to people, they've been managing their properties and you just arrive, you know? They don't know their name, you've got the team that you have employed, uh, that you have hired or partnered with, but they they don't even know your your company you know so to get the company to be established what i did here uh, for me when i was still working i made sure that my release uh, like i create a strong relationship with my clients it's not only about uh, they they buy the house and then there's no more relationship so i make sure that i establish the relationship with those clients so when i move from one agency to another i moved to those clients so it's like creating your own database. So when I started to open the company, those uh, um, agents that are working for me, they were not using real expertise properties. They were using my name because I did make a, a good name. You understand when I was selling for those people. So I think this could be the one of the challenges that you'll be facing when you are starting your own because it's not franchise, right? So another thing is capital. What I did here on capital, all these challenges are not a stumbling block ne, for you to start, but there is a solution to each and every challenge here. So for me, what I did with capital, um, I made sure that I worked before when I was an agent. So I saved, uh, I was making a research, how much are the boards cost, all those things. How much will be the rent and before I started. so. When I started, there was one lady that, uh, she was my client for that matter. So um, she showed me, like, I, I did this logo with a phone. I was still playing with it. She saw that thing on my status. And then she was interested, you know? So we had a, 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 an agreement of how we're going to, how she's going to actually fund me or fund or borrow me a certain money because I had money, you know? that she can cover these expenses in return of her getting a certain percentage. That was the agreement, you know. Though today I end up being alone, you know, of which is good. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I started. I think the, the capital, because most people, they start on the capital thing, that I want to do one, two, three, but, they, but do something that can, can make money for you so that you can start what you want to do. No, anything. Mm. Because it becomes a stumbling block for everyone will tell you about capital, capital. But I started me now without capital. I had little savings that I worked before as an agent. So the different race opposition is the one that I covered as well. Uh, that those people, they, there was a group of them planning to bring us down. Actually to close us in that three months before. And the other thing, in terms of market, because 
Remember, when you open your business, you want to service everyone, not this particular race, you know. So the other races, there's other race, uh, I'm not sure if I should mention it, but like they're selling for, the, for, for themselves, like they don't believe in they, 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 they could be someone as an agent helping them. Whether you are that race of them or not, they sell direct to one another. Yeah, well. yes. There are unfors uh, uh, unforeseen uh, occurrence like COVID-19. Um, it affected us during that total lo lockdown. But once it was open, because the, the interest rate went down, then it was our advantage. So the property market picked up from then up until now. So, but that two months, it did affect us because everything was closed. So the municipality was not working. The, the this office was closed. Um, uh, conveyances was were closed. So everyone uh, was not working. So it did affect, uh, made a huge impact in in our pocket. Currently in Middlebeck, we're facing the municipal strike. So if you're running this business, uh, for instance, if you sold the property, ne, there are certain certificate of compliance that's supposed to be. Uh, uh, um, done before they can send this deal to the at this office for lodgement. So those certificates, you get them from municipalities because there must be an inspector that will go and check the house uh, when they are doing the spluma. They have to check the house if what is in the plan is exactly with this what is in the site, right? So if there's a strike, these people are not working and then it means we are stuck. You know, so we, c we weren't able to get certificate. It means it won't. That there won't be a registration. Your business run from that side. When the property is registered, and then that's why you have a, um, a cash so that you can run your business. Having a, a lazy team, this will cost you, because if you, uh, but you start uh, when you are hiring, you need to have a good eye. You know, when you are hiring people who will work for you there. If, um, if you hire someone who comes from um, people who are, who are used to work, like getting a stable salary, you'll have a problem because this is a, a commission-based kind of a business. They are running their business under your business. So you need to get business people, not people who are used to, and, Besides, it's people who are, who, who are nibe genjan, people who can able to take responsibility. Because say, Lana, you won't even know who to lunch So you have to be responsible. So you need people who are fully responsible, who can able to uh, understand that they are running their own business under your business. Um, who knows what they want, why they are there. Unreliable tenants, we saw this, but the, uh, like during the COVID, that uh, many jobs were affected. Um, there were salary cuts. So in the property investment, those who, who bought properties to rent them out, there was a huge, um, uh, they were affected very badly, like mostly, I, I, I see residentials, there was that recovery, but the, the big buildings, like office spaces, people started to work from home, and if you have that building and you rent it out, it was one of those things, COVID uh, made a huge impact in that one. It did affect it a lot. So, but there are systems that we do um, to get good tenants. So those are the challenges, and then in the careers, um, those are the careers that are in some of them that are, um, are in real estate. So I see there's young people here, uh, and when we do career, when they do career, career advices at school, they don't cover real estate. So real estate has got a lot of car careers that you can do. Um, I'm glad you are here. You can able to be exposed. I'll 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 leave some of this so that 
maybe they can make copies for you. And then when you take that decision to, uh, in, in terms of choosing career, maybe you can be one of us. Yeah. So th that's the list here. Uh, analysts, they perform finali fi financial analysis and valu valuation of properties. And then there's property evaluators, uh, property practitioners, uh, real estate administrator, principal estate agent, estate agent, building inspector, home inspector, conveyancers, uh, it goes with property law, uh, bond originators, those ones are the ones that act on, on behalf of the, the buyer and uh, getting the finance from the bank. And property surveyors, so they all fall under real estate. So the future, I think this will be the last page, the, the future of real estate. So two weeks back, they were launching um, uh, um, the new name ne? at the Estate Agency Affairs Board. So there were a lot of changes, not changes or transformation they called, right? So wh when I was listening to that launch, the, um, the future in real estate, it looks bright mostly for black people, because they try by all means to bring black people to the, to the um, property industry. And what they did is that they amend some of the things that all the role players, including developers, uh, conveyancers, they will be in, uh, in terms of compliance, the, the, the board of EAP will be in charge. Like for instance, what they mentioned, Mr. Maslela, is that uh, you guys as developers, you you now weren't able to sell your properties as a developer. And so you guys have your own team and what. So the agency is supposed to be involved in that. So they will be involved also in the space of the conveyances that they won't register properties if um, there's no sort of like a condition report, but that is to protect the consumers. But it's like they try to get all the role players into one um, board sort of. Yeah. So also what they mention is that there will be possibilities of funding. So they will be, they were trying to, because when you are in state agent, you are only on con commission base. Yeah. So they are trying to give basics so that young people will be in because they, the thing that drives them away is that there's no basic commission. So when you start as an estate agent, it takes from you, you must have financial support, and you must have a car, it's demanding. You must have a car, you must have a nice phone, you must have laptops, yeah, that car must have a petrol, you understand? And at that time, you're not even working. So I think by this funding, they're trying to do such a thing so that uh, black people will be more in the industry. Okay. Yeah, I think this is it. Um, if you are interested, you want to start, uh, my business cards are there, or even if you want to invest in real estate, um, you can have a session, we can talk, I can guide you how to invest in real estate. I didn't cover that here. Uh, I think for investors, it need a, a session on its own, on how to invest in real estate. So, yeah. I think this will help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Tabushanze. Um, our program is very short now. We've got only two speakers that will come to the front and grace us with good information. So, just want to check, are you still, are you still awake? Still awake? All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna call on stage a lady who's gonna give us information communication and technology. She is known as Miss Amanda Noholoza and she'll be followed by Miss Nomakuku Ndelasi, Minister Nomakuku Ndelasi. Please let us welcome uh, Minister Amanda Noholoza into the stage.
Thank you, thank you, Minister. Um, I would like to thank the leadership of the church as well as the leadership of Business Desk for giving me this opportunity to come and share um, a few uh, points on the information communication technology sector. Okay, um, so I will just go straight to to the brief overview. Um, so basically, uh, this sector is, is I'm representing the businesses, technology businesses that allow interaction um, between people and organizations in the digital world. So we're looking at businesses like um, hard se businesses that are selling hardware, um, that, that's basically basing it on the components of the whole ICT uh, sector. That is your hardware. Um, these were mainly the businesses that were doing most um, in the beginning as the ICT industry has been evolving. Uh, the software industry, um, I mean software businesses, these are your businesses um, like your Microsoft. Uh, you know we have those packages from Microsoft and other softwares. And um, came cloud computing uh, with, with FireR. And uh, that is your mobile applications, and um, the ones that we are most familiar with, these are your, your WhatsApps, your, your Zoom applications, as well as also the infrastructure that hosts these applications. And also, um, one of the components is the internet access. Um, as we, know, we all know, the internet access, the data, transactions, Transactions are mainly um, the systems that we are using in the retail sector um, for like maybe sometimes it's your scanning and also fintech, um, your PayPal's, your world, world remits, uh, those are the transactional um, um, components. So as I mentioned, um, these components have been evolving over time. And um, with 4IR making ICT, one of the leading um, industries globally, and therefore uh, a significant contributor in economic growth in like the nations of the world. All right, um, the, uh, the highlights and the, o the opportunities um, that I looked into, um, it's basically the, the ones that, uh, that have maintained uh, sustainability in terms of um, the scaling up and also the disruption. Um, that is your telecoms. Um, that we're talking fiber, we're talking your voice, voice networks, wireless internet, uh, your, your internet of things. Uh, we're talking um, businesses now that are basically transforming digitally and instead of using manual processes, now they want to use uh, your sensors, for instance, in climatology, cl with, for instance, the climatic, um, climate change businesses now that want not to have people going to, to sites to, to, to check the, the, like the, the, the acidity of water, for instance but they would rather have a sensor that will basically just stay there and give them data on a real-time basis. And this is now connected to an application that will um, basically store that data and analyze it. So those are the solutions that we'll, we're talking about uh, on Internet of Things. And this is one of the industries that is growing like rapidly, especially in South Africa. For instance, we have now the telecoms um, institutions really tapping into this. Vodacom has even created a separate company, IoT.next, to basically focus on IoT only across the continent. Um, obviously in partnership with uh, Vodafone as well. So artificial intelligence as well, we see this mostly um, in manufacturing and um, 
is also mainly due to automation. Businesses wanting to do better in terms of uh, production and making sure that they, are, they, 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 they don't put uh, too much effort in to produce the most and therefore be able to make more income. So, um, so there's, these are opportunities that are available, that are available of which ICT companies, it, they can just basically approach these businesses because sometimes people are not, businesses are not adopting technology because they don't want to, but because maybe there isn't someone who's out there to educate them and to show them the opportunities that um, technology can bring and, and the value that technology can add on their businesses. So as ICT SMMEs, it's very important to basically harness these opportunities and um, as, as, as we grow, hopefully we'll be able to to reach more uh, ground in terms of uh, consulting and making sure that we have these um, we have these technologies adopted in order for the economy to grow even better. And then this one is the gig economy. This one is 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 the economy that is really also go growing very fast. Um, that is your freelancers especially due to COVID, people losing their jobs. People are now basically working online with companies overseas. Some of them, they are doing data capturing. At least it will give you 8,000 at the end of the month, which is good. And then um, some of them, okay, some of them we know, like your Ubers, people, are, I see a lot of people driving take a lot cars. They are basically tapping into the gig economy this we call them uh, agile workforce because they are independent and they just do whatever that needs to be done and, and off they go and they can do it at any time that is convenient to them. And also side hustling, this is where it comes in whereby um, ICT creates those opportunities to make money on the side. You can be a, a freelancer, you can even sell clothes on the internet, you can, you can basically just do anything. And um, and then also I just put also the, the opportunities as well for startup businesses. Partnership programs are very key. I'm finding, it, I'm finding them very key, especially when you're a startup and making um, inroads in terms of growing and building your business. Because at least you have, a, you, you have the, the infrastructure that you don't have to buy. For instance, Bitco, they have a, a partnership program um, that allows you to, to use their ICASA licenses and you just apply for exemption and then you can install fiber under my company and that helps me to grow my portfolio. If I get something, yes, it doesn't have much margins, profit margins, but at least it's something. But at the end of the day, I know that over time, I will be able, because now I understand the process, I understand what needs to be done when you're installing a fiber. I understand what, what the process is. And I'm able now to actually go for something bigger and be able now to, to make sure that it, it brings a return uh, over time. And also um, the telecommunications companies, because even though they are big companies, but FireR is new, and therefore they don't have capacity to basically launch out because remember South Africa is trying to launch out to the rest of the continent. Even Bitco is trying to launch out to and cover, uh, cover the whole continent. So is Vodacom and MTN and others. And at the same time, they don't want to employ people who are going to be full-time employees because it's a new, it, these are new territories. 
So the best thing to do is to have SMMEs that they are partnering with to actually launch out and go to these places. And um, also digital hubs. Digital hubs, um, we, we, are, we know them to be, um, we know them to be um, those places where we go for internet, like your Zimeles, your Cedars, and them. But now there are opportunities for a person to actually build their own digital hub and have SMMEs using their resources, SMMEs collaborating, SMMEs uh, building solutions. Because in ICT, you cannot, you cannot uh, do it alone. It's either you are going to, you can, you can build your software, but you're going to need the internet, or you're going to need um, something else that you, that you require, even, even in terms of uh, the skills that you need to achieve that work. So if we can build uh, digital hubs that can uh, um, allow the collaboration and um, make sure that we, we are able to, to, to partner up and build um, these solutions. And then also there's now four R incubators. These are now the, they are not digital hubs, but they allow you to bring your idea. If you have an idea that you are developing, especially if you already have a proof of concept, they are able to assist you, provide you with resources, that will help you to launch out your idea. And also, I've already mentioned the CEDA technology program whereby you can attend. There's now training that is available to everybody because of, um, of COVID. Now everything is online. So you don't have to drive to CEDA to attend a workshop. You can just go online and get your training that you need. In fact, it's not even CEDA only. It's a lot of, um, of organizations that are, that are training people so that this technology can advance and it can be adopted. The challenges um, is your network coverage because at the moment, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities in rural areas that can, for instance, your agriculture, you know. Um, there's a lot of technologies that can be used in rural areas that can assist f farmers to, to scale up and, and launch out to their markets. But now the problem is the coverage. But at least Umalanga now has um, Vodacom 5G. I saw that they just launched it. So I'm hoping that um, it will start to, because th that used to be one of the challenges that where they, like for instance, uh, government would want to have a citizen engagement application, uh, say in Bumalanga, and, but now they also want to reach the rural communities, but they can't use their smartphones because there's challenges with the, 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 in the coverage, the internet. Also, corruption, um, especially when you are trying to, 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 to contest for government uh, opportunities. You know, there will always be those who want to meet privately. But yeah, because yeah, we, we don't subscribe to that. And, um, and also, not, not just it's not just about that, but it just causes a lot of delays in terms of knowing whether this is coming through or is not coming through. But um, the, 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 the ways to work around that, the private sector still has a lot of opportunities that uh, we, can, we can look, look into while you are waiting, um, if, if you, you really want to go that route. Uh, the cost of developing solutions is one of the challenges but as I've mentioned, um, there are these partnership programs, which I think they are very helpful. Because 
Amazon, for instance, will allow you, will give you uh, free access to their cloud. You can develop your solution, and um, they even give you credits to use some of their expertise um, resources, so some of their expert resources, and that enables you to, um, to at least get somewhere with your solution. For instance, if you can't afford a solutions architect, because they, they come pricey, at least you can use the Amazon one just to get to the point of a proof of concept so that you can at least go and pitch with your proof of concept to whichever client that you want to approach. And also Google resources as well. They also have uh, good credits in terms of their resources. And um, also t uh, technology adoption, because sometimes um, there can be an opportunity in an organization, but there is resistance, especially around the fears of technology taking people's jobs, which obviously is not the case. But people still think that it's, it's, that's what it is. But in fact, technology is just there to, to help people to make their lives better and to also improve their skills. So in conclusion, um, I would just like to say that um, due to FOIR and digital transformation, ICT sector, it gives everybody an opportunity to participate. You can participate at any level of your understanding. And whether you are participating full-time, there's space for you. Whether you are participating part-time, there's also space for you. So um, industries now are using this, and therefore it is easier to, to scale up with this route of um, ICT when you are using, when you have ICT incorporated in your business processes. So also um, there's these new technologies that have not been harnessed. I know that even though now the IoT, they are really getting strongly into it, but there's still machine learning that is still on development stages. So if you start now to make yourself an expert or, you know, just to, to, to upskill yourself in those areas and also your drone technologies, by the time uh, things blow up, they will be needing people like experts like, like yourself or like myself. <laughs> uh, also, there are many online, online courses that provide these uh, skills. Like now, now we had Udemy advertising for 150 rand courses um, on, on developing on Python development and others on project management and others on solution architecture. And those videos are there. You have the video forever. For uh, I think it's about three years, if I'm not mistaken. So you can always go to that video and just learn and learn and learn until you get it, you know? So also, as I've mentioned, it's very important to, to collaborate in this sector, especially as a startup, because I cannot afford a full-time developer at this stage. So I have someone that I'm working with. I know that um, if I need uh, something, I'm, he's there. If he needs my services, I'm there. So we are basically working together. And, and also, it, it, like, um, there are other associations like your, your progressive blacks in IT, ICT whereby they have these um, WhatsApp groups. And every time something comes up, someone will post, oh, here's an opportunity. So who's, who's, who, uh, who's a BA that is available that can assist me on this project uh, for maybe three months or so? So um, it's, 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 it's important to actually um, have those partnerships going, have 
you know where to go for what, you know. So um, until you are at a pl point whereby you are able to, to basically be on your own, and yes, as, as Minister Patudu was saying that you, you cannot uh, build a business by yourself. You cannot do everything by yourself. It's really true. Until you are really focused and you are serious about it, then you realize that really you cannot do it by yourself. On that note, I would like to thank you very much for uh, your time. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, on that note, I'd like to read a few verses. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The wealth of the wise is their crown, but the folly of, fo of fools yields folly. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children and it will be a refuge. I hope that with what we have shared today, what we have heard today, we will be able to make wealth for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now the time we have been waiting for. We've got the last speaker who's gonna come here and uh, give us information on engineering and quantity surveying. Please listen carefully. Uh, her name is Minister Nomakoku Mvelasi. Minister, please come and join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. And yes, thank you for the valuable information that you are getting this morning. Um, my name is Noma Kukumvelase, as our minister uh, has mentioned. I run a company called Lizuile Engineering. And uh, Lizuile Engineering, we specialize in valves, right? We, we sell a solution, basically. We, we look at your whole uh, system as engineers, and we provide a better solution on how you can better run your system. Uh, we're not only giving you a valve, is for giving you a valve for that sake. We want to solve your problems. Uh, one of the problems we find on some of the plants that we visit, we find that uh, people, uh, some of the engineers are inexperienced and probably they haven't had uh, uh, much exposure to their field. Wrong applications uh, for particular systems that causes them to to waste money, to keep on buying the same thing over and over. When you are using the wrong item for the wrong for, for, for a certain application, you will then have to uh, part with money because that system will break every now and then, right? And will cause you production for the whole, I mean, you, you, if, if you lose production for a whole day, some of our clients are looking at millions when, when they stop production for a day just by using a wrong product, right? So, um, Lizuila Engineering was, is that it was established in 2019. Uh, yeah, I became full time in business in 2019. And yeah, it's been a roller coaster. It's been exciting. It's been a very, very good journey. Uh, thank you to our SSI School of Integrity for being part. Uh, I hope you learn a lot. And yeah, for careers, this is the best time for you to find out which career best suits your personality and what uh, you probably want to do when you're older. Uh, I'm a quantity surveyor by profession, so one will ask, quantity surveyor is a cost specialist in the building industry. You heard Minister Isaac and we heard Mr. Tabo, they're in the construction, they're in uh, property. So when it comes to uh, that, you need, you need to know your numbers. You need to know the costing behind that. You see a complete unit completed. You need to know the breakdown of what went in, how much for you to complete that particular uh, project. So yes, I am a quantity surveyor, so I, I kind of married the two, right? Uh, my uh, experience of valves came from the organization that I worked for for 13 years. I worked for ESCOM. That's where I got exposed to valves and I got to cost them 
uh, on, 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 you know, on a daily basis. So that's how I became uh, in love with the product and decided that this is the product that I can push into the market. So then sales and marketing became my next passion, right? Because uh, Minister Patudi just shared uh, the cough business is sales and marketing. You can have a fancy business. If, you're not, if, you, if you don't have sales, that means there's no money coming in, right? You don't have money in that business. You can have beautiful models that you can think of, wonderful websites, but you gotta push sales. How many did I sell on a monthly basis, right? How many clients did I convince to buy my product? Do they see value for my product? Do they see value for my services? We do not only sell, uh, as I said, we're selling solution, not only a product, but we're also selling services, right? So, if I may just begin, I'm gonna look, uh, I'm gonna move between two, right? I'm gonna move between the quantity surveying as well as the engineering. So, what I find interesting is uh, when it comes to contracting, right? So now, you, uh, you have landed a contract. So the type of contracts that are used mainly um, in the engineering sector, it's for the building guys, it's the UJPCC, right? And uh, in the engineering sector, you find the FIDIC and as well as the NEC contract. So those that are in mining, that are in the power utilities, you're kind of familiar with these contracts. The FIDIC is more of an international, so it's, it's the International Federation of Consulting Engineers. It's called FIDIC, you'll find it in your, in your ESCOMs, they, 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 they contract on that. The new engineering contract, it's mainly for engineering projects. It covers the whole aspect. And then you, the JPCC, as I mentioned, it's, it's for building. So that's the contract that is used. So I'm gonna focus um, only in four areas, right? I want us to look, once you landed a contract as a small business, right? You're out there every day looking for work, you are sourcing, you are, you are, you are selling, uh, sales and marketing, you are, you are submitting your documentation, your tendering, you want to get that contract. So when you get that contract, there are four, four things that are very, very critical and key. So one is the scope of work, right? Two is the pricing, contingency, price adjustment. So those are the four critical things that you look at. Number one, the scope of work, your scope has to be well, well defined, okay? Before we get to pricing, if, if you don't know what you are pricing, how are you going to get to that, 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 that value for that particular contract? So you really need to have a well-defined scope. You sit with a team of engineers, you sit with your team. Mr. Uh, Patudi just mentioned that you, you can't work in isolation, you can't work alone. If you're in business, you've got to have a team that supports you. You've got to have somebody who's technical, who understand the technical part of the whole project. Who knows exactly what needs to go in at what intervals in order for you to be able to reach your target. So then when your scope is well defined, so this is where your engineering uh, part becomes critical to say, let my scope be well defined so that I can be able to get a price, an accurate price. Because if the scope is not well defined, the price will not be that accurate, right? So we'll talk about the different types of estimates because the estimates, uh, they have a level of accuracy. So some of them will not be 100%, but they will give you a, a good sense of how much you're going to be spending in this particular project. So we're also looking at contingency. Contingency, unforeseen events, okay? You wake up tomorrow, it's raining. You, you don't know that it's going to rain. Yes, you might know there is a rainy season, but you don't know exactly how many days because that type of weather will delay your project. It, in construction, you cannot pour cement, right? It's raining. You need good weather, and you need enough time to allow the concrete to cure. So you need to understand and to know uh, exactly uh, and predict with what is probably going to be happening so that you can be able to uh, find out your price. So when you're priced, then you allow for a bit of contingency. So over and above your pricing, you have to have contingency above. You will be spending a bit extra, right? In many historical data tells us that 
it tells us that, you know, most projects, they, they will overrun. So you got to have something so that when there is a deviation or a variation that takes place, you know that you are kind of covered so that you don't have to now go and take out money from your pocket that you did not plan for. And the last one is contract price adjustments. So with contract price adjustment, right, you find that there is inflation. There is inflation. A contract, if you landed it uh, this year and it's going to run for a period of three, five years, most contracts are three or five years, it can be less. The first six months, prices can be fixed. If you are in a particular industry, let's take my industry for example, most of my products are made out of steel. Steel is a very volatile industry, so there will be fluctuations. So the price that I price today, by, you know, August, that price will be completely different. So if I have not factored that into my contract, that it, then it means that I will be just doing an exercise. It will be eating my profit because somebody's got to, somebody has to pay for the inflation that is, 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 is uh, occurring. So if we look at definitions, um, we have these type of documents when it comes to uh, the pricing. We have the activity schedule. It's a document prepared by a cost consultant that describes the project-specific activities of work identified by the scope of work, drawings, or specifications. So e-activity schedule, uh, I'll, I'll come to the bill of quantities right now. Activity schedule and the bill of quantity, they are similar. They differ slightly in terms of the breakdown of that particular component. For example, if you look at an activity schedule when it comes to building a house, you only have foundation, superstructure, roof, internal finishes. It gives you those lump sum. But when you look at the bill of quantity, we get to the detail. Cement, how many cubic meters, right? We look at labor, how many plumbers, how many brick layers at what rate per hour. So it is more defined and broken down, but they are both pricing documents that are utilized in the construction and engineering sector. So a, a, a bill of quantity is a document also prepared by a cost consultant, which is, which is us, it's, it's me, specified measured quantities of, terms, uh, in, of items worked identified by the scope of work, drawings, and specifications. So I, I did mention to you the scope of work, but it's critical for the scope of work to be clear, right? The scope of work is like, it's like leadership. It must give you clear direction with where are we going. So that you will find from your drawings. The drawings will give you specification. God gave Moses a plan to build a temple. He says, build it according to spec, right? That's how critical specifica spec specification is. Cost estimating, appro approximating cost of project or scope of work under consideration. So some of the cost uh, estimates that we come in with, that's the, there might be a, a high level of unforeseen work that is going to take place. So meaning it, can not, it cannot be described to the details, to the T. So then that's where you will allow a level of inaccuracy. So we look at maybe, let's say for example, you know this particular project, we've costed it and we are 80% accurate. So what then it tells us is that we must increase the level of contingency, okay? It means there's a bit of unforeseen stuff that the scope did not cover. So it means where we were gonna have 10% contingency, maybe this time we should be having 25% contingency. Just a set aside to know that, you know, if we come across a, an unforeseen event. Schedule of rates, I did mention, you've got a plumber, schedule of rates, a document prepared by also a cons consultant that lists work of items and rates thereof together with resources and equipment and vision to be required to do the work identified by the scope of work. So the, the rates and the schedules, so you know you're gonna need a grader, a bobcat, how much is a bobcat costing me for the day and, and whatnot and uh, how many labor force general workers I'm gonna need, do I need an engineer, how much is an engineer per hour and you know, and you have that whole total costing there. So if we look at uh, estimating, when you look at estimates, we have um, classes of estimates. 
class one, class two, class three, class four, and those, they, le they differ in terms of the level of accuracy, as I mentioned to you. So if you look at class five, for example, 50% accuracy in terms of defining the scope. So engineers can have a really hard time as well in terms of defining s the, the scope that needs to be implemented. So then we know exactly that, that when it comes to price, we need to trade carefully. We need to make sure that we have also allowed just as much because there, that means there's just a big risk involved there. We'll end up spending more than what we anticipated. So if it's 80% in terms of uh, estimating, we can be a little bit comfortable. 20% we are covered. We know that, you know, we'll be able to finish the job. Remember, when we take a contract, when we take a contract, the aim is to make profit. It's not to be busy with you in a contract. No. Hey, three years is a long time to be busy with something that's not going to give you money. Yeah, one? It's coming into your bank, it's going out, it's coming into your bank. As businesses, as SMMEs, we want to make money, we want to be profitable, we want to grow our businesses, and that requires money. So if we are doing, uh, if we are just keeping busy with exercises that, uh, you know, they are not giving us money. If you do a big, big project, you know, you should, you should know I'm marking up 25, 30%. So if I'm doing a 10 million job, I should be getting a good 30% out of this, you know. So you, you, you kind of, you have to work out as well your level of effort that you put in with the output that you're going to get out. That's why you will say no thank you to another big job that appears to be big and fancy. But you say thank you because when you look at the numbers, you're thinking, I'd rather get a small job that I make, you know, and then get other more jobs instead of me to be stuck into something. Some of these contracts really don't have money. And as I come to the last one, e contract price adjustment, CPA. So if we look at CPA, we have uh, different indices from the Steel and, Engin uh, and, and Engineering Federation of South Africa, which we call CIFSA. They will give you all your indices there. So meaning you, you get your base date, you know today uh, an engineer cost uh, 1,500 rand an hour. Six July, there's an increase the salary increase. So you're able to calculate that quickly and find out, hey, this guy by December is going to be costing me now no longer 1,500. He's going to be costing me 1,800, right? Because you can forecast and you can calculate how much it's going to be costing you. So there's also stats essay. You get indices. If you start exporting and you are going to other countries, Europe, Africa, there's also LME, London Metal, Exche uh, Metal Exchange. So I mentioned this steel because this steel can be quite problematic. Steel can be very expensive, can chow out your profit, and then you're left with nothing, right? So it's very, very important for you to be able that to check that you're on the right track. Get, get, get the professionals on board. I know these guys can be expensive because uh, they rather be, you know, in projects that gives them money. But yeah, get this guy to be on your team, uh, even if he comes and sees you once or twice a month. But let them have, let them have a look at, at how your costs are looking so that you don't lose money on your projects that you are doing. Uh, you want to grow your business, as I mentioned. So there are many great engineering projects that have taken place and they were profitable and they were successful. So because they had a team, I go back to what Minister Patudi said, you do not work in isolation. So when you are those who are building houses, from the point the architect finished, finishes uh, to, to, draw the, to draft the drawings, and the scope is, is completely, the spec is outlined, you get in, you get in your cost specialist, and then you, so you ask them to start, to start measuring for you and start checking. And remember also, it doesn't end there on the drawing. It also, you need intervals. Uh, oh, oh, Mr. Tabo mentioned, Goti, you know, you have inspectors. As, as, as the, the cost consultants goes to site, he also inspects and he checks the progress to say, are, are you building according to spec? Are you spending according to the bill of quantities as well, okay? Is there anything coming up that is, you know, that is, is, is not in, in your bill of quantity? So it, it's, a, it's a proper document. It gives you guideline. It helps you as well not to overrun on your cost. Yes, majority of project, projects we know they overrun, as I mentioned, but you have contingency for that. You have catered. At least you have thought about it, and you've anticipated that, that there might be a spend. It's not a surprise. 
it's a problem when it's a surprise. Then it kind of hurts a bit. And it, it hurts. Now you have to spend money that you, d you, you really had no plan on spending just because you didn't anticipate it. So, yes, get the, get the right, uh, right uh, professionals on board. They can be expensive, but you have to pay. You have to pay for you to get a good service. Uh, Minister Patudi says that if you know nothing about accounting, are you going to be busy in those gasars? You know, we're going to be busy when we're filing, when we You know, ask the specialist. Let, let the account, accountant do your financial statements. Let them do what they best at. So allow people to come in and give you their expertise. And, yeah, as I close, uh, lots of opportunities in engineering. Uh, one, we are in an engineering town. We're in Midbank. So uh, engineering opportunities... You find them at ESCOM, the mine, you find them petrochemicals, they were just doing one aspect of building houses. There's a lot that go into that petrochemical plant. If you go in, you'll find amazing discoveries in there, especially if you've got a mind for the youngsters, if you've got a mind that wants to discover things and solve problems. Yeah, so those are the places. We have, uh, oh, I mentioned ESCOM, we've got also ferrometals, we've got the columbus steel, then, then chem minerals. So there's quite a lot of engineering plants uh, around this area. So there is no reason why you shouldn't be uh, part of any engineering work. So one of the challenges that uh, we find, uh, my colleague has mentioned it, without us dwelling too much on it, it's, it's the corruption, but it's, it's not an obstacle. You can, you can bypass that. Uh, maybe you ask me how. You just identify those organizations that you see that they arrive on corruption and you, you shift your focus. Because not all organizations are the same, right? They differ. So if we want to go to Len, I know everybody's like, I want a vendor, I want a vendor, I say ESCOM. If you don't have a vendor, I say ESCOM, you can still work. Uh, if business like is not dependent on the vendor, I say ESCOM. Yeah, but you're selling a product here, yeah. you're selling a solution. And if anybody wants a product, wants a service, they should come to you, right? Okay, another obstacle that Mr. Tabo mentioned, capital. The cost of, business, of doing business is very high. It is a bit high. You need to get to site meetings, site briefing. You need to prepare documentation. You have to pay the specialist. You have to, you know, you, you just, there's a lot to pay for at the end of the day. So if you haven't landed that big contract or if you, you know, you haven't, you, you, might, you will be discouraged. But don't be discouraged. Uh, find uh, other things that you can do on the side, uh, a, a side hustle. Uh, I know what I do a lot. I also do a lot of supply as well of materials, whether it's building plumbing material. I, I avail myself for that because I have knowledge of that product. If somebody's not looking for valves, I if offer them the whole solution. I like, do you need pipes for the water system as well? I'm currently approaching Emalatleni. There's so many water problems in Emalatleni. And I'm just wanting to see, is there any solution that I can provide you guys before I can even give you uh, my products? I know you, you, will, you will need a lot of my products, but can I just give you different solutions that I have probably for you guys? So if somebody gives me an ear, then I pitch. I, I, I pitch, and then if somebody gives me work, and then, yeah, my lead has turned into a sale. Remember, the heart of business is sales. It's sales and market sales. You have to bring in that sale. If you don't have a sale, you don't have a business, okay? So it capital, yeah, find a side hustle, find an investor. I believe venture capitalists are out there. We are looking for them, yes. Uh, yeah, so find somebody who can invest if nobody wants to invest, but keep on going. I know sometimes it can be tough, you know. It, it, the first four years of the business is quite very emotional. And sometimes I feel <laughs> a little bit sorry for people around us because, hey, tomorrow you're not smiling and people are, what's wrong? Did I do something? It's like, no, I'm going through stuff, you know? <laughs> I'm going through stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got a baby that I'm growing here. So sometimes we've got teething problems. There's no money coming in at all. You're sitting, you, you're thinking, oh, when is this money going to come in? Now everything is set up. The business is looking beautiful. The website is nice. You know, I've employed people. And now how am I going to pay them now that they are here, you know? So that's why we kick in as, as believers and children of God. We've got faith. God provides. He's, you know, he provides for us in business while you're still waiting for more sales to come through. So I just want to encourage the youngsters. Yes, you can start your own businesses. I've, I've met industry peer, uh, uh, other entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs who said I've never gone to 
to, to, to full-time employment. I went straight into my business. So we just pray that you're going to be those ones as well. Just go in and do your business. So Minister Paturi said there's a shortage of entrepreneurs. So yeah, le don't let the challenges uh, discourage you, but be encouraged. We are standing. And uh, as in a connection, uh, we're not paying anybody bribes. We're just standing on the word of God, and we, we know that we can do proper business without having any shenanigans and, and, and other stories, right? Yes. Thank you. That was my presentation. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, thank you very much for keeping your presentation very short. I've got just a few announcements before we close. Uh, we've got a Building Together conference coming up in March. Please, uh, to register for that conference, the package is only 200 bucks. From the 10th of March up until the 12th of March. You start with the intro service at 6 p.m. Uh, happen both on the 11th of March, and then on the 12th of March to be happen both end workshops. Oh yeah, even on the 11th, it, there's gonna be a workshop starting at 9 a.m., and then the service will be at 6 p.m. If you want to come and join, please come and join. Uh, the next part of our program is gonna be the questions and answers. So let me just check a few things. Okay, we currently don't have uh, the next date for our business test, but as soon as we have it, we're gonna make it available. So I'm gonna take the questions so that our leaders can be able to give us answers. If they, they don't have the answers, we're gonna share the answers in the group. So if there's any questions, please uh, do prepare them. I would like to give a minister Patudi, an opportunity to have a few words. Minister, please. Thank you. Um, this is a question from someone who sent me a WhatsApp. Uh, the first part of it is a complaint that my presentation was too high level and too short. And then the second part, okay, the first part is not, doesn't need an answer, I guess. And then the second part of the question is, uh, please ask Tabo, what impact does the new law on property evalu evaluate that was passed on the 1st of February on property prices versus the bond debt? For instance, if you bought your property for one million and, and it's now evaluated at uh, 800,000. I hope Tabo understand that question. Okay, question noted. Is there another person who would like to come up with a question? If there isn't, uh, I'll give Mr. Tabo an opportunity to, to give an answer. Okay, there's a question. All right, another question? Um, I've got a question for Mr. Patrudi. Just on the benefits of the CITAS as, a, as an entrepreneur, because I believe you need to register with the CITAS. Um, what are the benefits for me as an entrepreneur, not as a trainee, but for me as a company owner in terms of being registered with the CITAS? And what benefit does it bring into my business? If I can understand that part, thanks. Thank you very much. Is there another question? Or should I go to the speakers? Okay, I don't see anyone raising their hands. Okay, let's start with the first, okay. Uh, l l let me start with the complaint, okay. Uh, I didn't hear about the complaint. It was addressed to a certain speaker? It was addressed to you. Uh, could you please address the, the complaint before we continue, Mr. Paturi? Over to you. Uh, the complaint was addressed on WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so... So, no, he was just complaining that uh, my presentation was too high level. Mm -hmm. He would have liked me to break it down further. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And uh, obviously, due to time constraints, we couldn't uh, go further. But uh, perhaps, um, as we have said this year, we want to get practical. There can be a workshop next time that looks at that specific uh, sector only, you know, where we're going to answer all the questions. But I think I can also take this opportunity to answer um, the second question that was related to me. All right. Yes, so, okay. so the benefit, um, other than the fact that um, if, if you are an entrepreneur and you, you, you want to register with uh, any of the CITAS, uh, maybe if I understand your question well, firstly, if I am doing training, uh, my company does training, Obviously, it means that I'm contributing towards the skills base of the nation. So I'm already solving a problem there. Uh, secondly, uh, solving a problem should not be the end of it as an entrepreneur. You need to be compensated for solving the problem. Um, there are a lot of um, programs that are opening up uh, in government, like uh, your discretionary uh, grants that are coming up that can be used as, as an entrepreneur. You apply for that uh, grants from government. Uh, they will, if you, you are successful, then you are given a certain number of people that you can train, you know, and, and you get paid uh, for, for, for that, obviously. Uh, other things that you can do is to collaborate with other companies. Uh, for instance, um, I will give an example. If you, 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 you registered with MQA, uh, for instance, to do health and safety. You are then able to go to one of the mines and say, this is what I do, I offer health and safety training. Then the other benefit, let's say for instance, I own a, a construction company, and then I register with the, the skills levy, uh, meaning that the people that I train as a company through any of the CITAS, uh, I'm going to get paid back. I'm going to claim that back as a, as a, as a, as a, as a tax uh, from, from SARS. So the people that you are training as a company that you are paying for throughout the year, basically government is saying that we are going to pay you back when you do your, your, your tax returns. So there are quite a number of uh, benefits associated for both a person who wants to, to be involved in training and for both a company that registers and say our employees will be, when they are trained, they are going to be given a, 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 a CETA accredited certificate. So you're not actually spending your own money, but government is going to pay you back that money which you are spending. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much, Minister Patudi. That was well answered. Um, I'm going to move to the next speaker. You have a question that talks about the impact of the new law. Yeah, no, um, I didn't see this law, eh? uh, so maybe I can give them answer later. But I, it doesn't make sense because it means if he says the property you bought at million is now evaluated mm. at eight hundred, because property didn't go down. The only thing that went down is the interest rate. All right. So, but. Um, I'm not saying it's not true. I'll make, I'll find out about this one. Okay, so your answer basically is that you're going to research and check which part was uh, introduced and then you come back to us in the group. Thank you very much, Mr. Tabo. That is well said. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, it was regarding Mr. Isaac Masilele's uh, video. M Mr. Masilele, we, we, we watched your video and we, we just want you just to give us a brief summary around the video, and then we can move on to the next question. Okay, no, thank you very much um, for giving me this opportunity maybe to just share You're welcome, sir. a little bit. Uh, I think that video will motivate the majority of us, and at the same time, don't look at that level to say, I cannot do it, because I didn't study that level. Actually, I started like your father because when he started everything, he didn't use any money. So I still continue with the principle that you don't need money to start anything. Started with that principle when I went to varsity, registered with no money, finished today. I built a house in Middleburg with no money, 
it was completed. I started the project with no money. I mean, I shared last time. I think the church has got that video. I mean, you can get details. Yes, yes. So what's the point? The point, I think, we're supposed to get into a position whereby we imitate what God is doing. I mean, when he wanted order, economic things to move on earth and there be light, he just spoke. And sometimes, Noma Kuku phones me and say, sure, if you told me that in physics are like this, I was never come. Then I said, that's exactly why I didn't tell you. <laughs> and I laugh. <laughs> because nice in the one. world of business, it is a business of faith. It is a land of faith. Without True. faith, you cannot survive. And you don't go according to what you see. You actually go according to what you desire. Then what you desire, you speak. And I'm not developing any new principle. It's a principle that God did before. I mean, when God looked into the darkness and the disorderly that was there on earth, and the earth that was without form, and the darkness that was over the face of the deep, and the spirit of God hovering over the face of water. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So he spoke, then everything becomes orderly. So when you have spoken, then you need wisdom. So that through that wisdom, then you can have application that can actually make you to achieve what you desire. A quick example. Sometime I shared that I built a house with no money, so you don't need money to make money. I mean, this guy was working at ESCOM. He built a house halfway. Then he get an employment somewhere. He's not completing his house. Then I look at it. It's halfway, but I look at it. I see it being complete. Then I look for evaluation as to when this house is complete, how much will it be evaluated at? Then I found from the estate agents that it will be 800,000. Then I measured that's quantity surveying works now to say at the level where it is to completion, how much is needed. Then I found that it's 200,000. Did I have that? No, but I had wisdom. During the same period again, there was another friend of mine, Ed Evander in Secunda, who had sold this house and moving into Jobet. Then I went to him and sold this idea to say, give me 200,000. I'm going to complete this house. When it's completed, put it into the market, sell it for 800000 Then I'll make a clean profit, about 400000 When I paid the guy who has built the house halfway, 200000 and the 200000 that I'm borrowing from you. And for both of you, I'll give you 50000 each. And all of them agreed. And then the house was built. Then the profit of 400000 generated. Income that I never had, then I had. Then where the holding was born. By one house. Property development is nothing else other than building one house. The same principles that you are using when you are building one house is the same principle when you are doing a number of houses. So if you get it right in one house, then you'll be able to duplicate it in number of houses. At this point in time, I'm not an artisan in my business. I'm not working in my business. I'm working on my business. What does that mean? I've got systems and processes that are running independent of me. Guess what? I don't even know how to lay a brick. <laughs> I don't even know how to wire a house. I don't even know how to plaster a house. But I know the processes in terms of quality as to how the product is supposed to look like when it's built properly, when it's wired properly, when it's plastered properly, when it's painted properly. I know the end product. Then through that end product, it, 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 I'm not a technician. I'm managing the system. Mm -hmm. Then the product comes out because of the system that is in place. So why other businesses are not going, like as Mr. Patu has already mentioned, you become a technician in your business. You're not supposed to be. Yes, at the beginning. But if you want growth, then now you've got to come up and manage your business, not work in your business. I don't know whether we get that. I would do. So then from that process, then I met one of the family here in Whitbank, the Van Veek family. I mean, I think it's well known, develop around Highfield Park, Model Park, uh, Banken Park, the business park that is at N4. I mean, I worked with them. When they were doing that project, I was their mentee. Then I developed not the skill to lay a brick. That's not the issue. A lot of people, they can lay a brick. But very few people who can be business owners for property development. You've got to understand the systems, the processes, what follows, when. So if you understand that, then you become a developer. 
Now that I was a developer, but around the Witten area, then opportunity came in Sasol area or Secunda area, whereby they wanted a developer who's coming from that side. And there's very few black developers. I don't know any here in Witten. I don't know any myself, but yet I'm a developer. <laughs> so I maximized that opportunity and went to Secunda because I'm original, I'm coming from there. Then I was given the project. I mean, we've been in partnership with Sasol from 2015 until now. What keeps this partnership? It's simply because of the quality that we deliver, because our motto is that we worship God by the quality that we deliver. Quality Guess what? Your work. Sasol went into tender in 2019, hoping that they would get another black developer who would deliver better than what we do. 13 companies tendered, three shortlisted, us appointed again in 2020. Why? Because of worshiping by the product that we deliver, because none can compare to us. When I'm saying worshiping God by the product we deliver, our employees know that if you are caught doing a wrong thing, you're fired. You can't compromise quality because quality is our worship to God. Can you imagine when these people are going into these quality houses, literally they cry. Because we've taken what normally people are experiencing in the up market, we've brought it into a gap level market. I mean, go into those houses, open invitation to say, if you are willing to come and visit so that we can have a taste of touching and feel it and sing it, you can come. I think Mr. Patuti was there uh, April last year or something like that where we were breaking ground in another project. This year, uh, end of March, beginning April, about 20 people will be moving in their houses. I mean, it's no longer dusty, as you saw last time. Now it's a township. So that's what we are saying. Let's put their hand on the plow, not only the theory, but people experience the real practical of it as to what is happening. So the opportunity that is happening at Secunda is open everywhere. You go here in Whippen, there are mining companies. There are laws which are compelling the mining companies to build houses for their employees. But the mining companies are not in a business to build houses. So if you bring a solution, whereby you can provide houses to the mine so that they can provide them to their employees. They will welcome that because they are not in business. They're in business of mining coal, mining platinum, mining whatever that they are mining. So if you can understand the concept of what Sasol is doing and what we're doing with Sasol and duplicate it anywhere within the country, the law is in your side. The companies will be compelled to actually take your proposal and implement it. Not only that now we've partnered with Sasol. We've partnered with one of the big banks now because they like the concept that is happening at Sasol. We're delivering now at the Everton. We're delivering now around Springs. But this started where? Started in Middleburg with one house. So if ever can do it in Middleburg with one house with no money, you can also do it. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Masile. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have come to the end of our session. If there isn't anyone with a question, then I would like to invite Mr. Patrudi to come and do our uh, vote of thanks and close our session. From my side, thank you very much for being with me. I drop the mic. <laughs> Don't break it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, program director, for steering the ship. Uh, thank you very much to those who were watching us from the comfort of their homes. Uh, someone told me that they are only listening, not watching, because they were driving. We are very thankful for your participation. Uh, to all the engagements on WhatsApp, thank you very much. And to those who attended here, we are very thankful for your participation. Uh, to all the presenters, um, Mr. Tabo Tanze, we, we are very thankful for the work that you, you have done. Uh, I, I think even the, 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 the career opportunities that you have listed will really go a long way in helping those who want to get into the real estate. Uh, Mr. Masilela, as always, we are very thankful for your participation. Um, I hope that people get inspired. Uh, Amanda, Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, you know, for some time I wanted to get into the IOT, 
uh, at least I've got a few devices now in, 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 in the kingdom of Eswatini. Uh, currently running, I was watching them when you were talking now from my laptop, checking how they are performing. Um, it's, a, it's an exciting, exciting uh, environment. Uh, in Eswatin, we have turned few, they, there's a client who had some motors that they wanted to monitor. It's just ordinary motors without any technology in them. We have put in a system for them to be monitored anywhere in the world so that client can sleep peacefully. They can see what the motors are doing, the performance. Uh, we have uh, incorporated sort of machine learning to analyze the data for them so they can see the, gra the graphic presentation anywhere in the world at any given time. So uh, thank you for that presentation. Um, I think, Noma uh, Kuku, I think uh, we need a conference on your presentation. I, I think I think I think some of you guys agree with me. Uh, one of the biggest challenges for any entrepreneur is pricing. It's a it's a big challenge uh, for those who are working in 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 in, in uh, supply chain would know that uh, an entrepreneur prices something and then two three months down the line from the beginning of the project they want to come back and renegotiate the cost or renegotiate whatever because they they now realize that they under quoted they will not be able not that they will not make profit but they will not be able to finish the project so um thank you very much uh, for attending and um we are done for the day thank you so as we go outside let's uh network let's talk to each other Let's find out each, uh, from each other who's doing what that we can benefit from. Thank you. And there are refreshments. <laughs>